Um, no, nah, like I said, uh, oh, it's kind of louder today, sorry. Like I said, after the first game, um, there was a reason for optimism um, with the way that we defended and the style of the game. We just had to hit shots. Um, Maxie, big time, right, eight threes. And obviously enough can't be said about Jalen and the way he played. So, you know, you, you saw the same style of game. Um, 104 is not a far cry from 99. Um, we obviously gave up a, a couple too many threes uh, for what we'd like. But we played the, the way we wanted to and was fortunate to hit uh, more shots than 93 points. You mentioned Jalen there. What's it like to play next to a guy that just seems so locked in and, and just so, Jason said, like ready to attack from the jump? Yeah, I mean, um, in terms of playing with Luka, in terms of playing with JB, like when, when they get on a heater, you know, you just kind of hope to get the right matchup on them, you know, set the right screens, and then let them hoop. DwaynePriceMath.com, uh, with Maxie guys going like this, Spencer, uh, it's the, the whole idea just to make sure you keep getting as more attempts as possible. Um, I think the, the beautiful part about Maxie in, in this series is he's a stretch five. Uh, they play two traditional drop bigs, um, so it kind of distorts their defense because obviously, you know, Rudy Gobert, Hassan Whiteside are phenomenal shot bloggers at the rim. They want to come contest and, you know, be a, be a big help side presence. But, you know, Maxi uh, giving him space, it, it gives him room to knock down shots as well. Now, overall, Utah obviously makes a lot of, attempts a lot of three-pointers and made a lot of three-pointers. You guys made twice as many as they did tonight. Yeah. How did that help? Well, I mean, I know we attempted a lot more as well, so uh, I think that's a, that's a part of it. But, you know, overall, just trying to run them off the line, um, make sure that they're not getting uh, the 43s that they average, and, uh, you know, just flying around. And then, like I said, again, we're fortunate enough to make shots tonight. Tim Kato, the athletic, uh, when those drop days actually have to close out on Maxi and they're kind of alternating the pain and Utah's rotating, like what does that feel like? What, how does that change the dynamics of the court for you guys, the guards, uh, you know, chirping on the outside? Uh, well, obviously, we're, we're still trying to work the spacing, just get into the paint, um, start the blender, as, as they call it, um, and just make the right read. You know I mean, a, a couple of those corner threes is just, you know, they help. You pass to where they help from, and then it may not even be your assist, right? Maybe the hockey assist because it's a swing, swing to the slide, to the corner, or whatever it may be. But you're trying to break the paint, you know, and, and start that, that defensive rotations. I just saw the stat of 17 uncontested threes from you guys, which I think is the most in 10 years in the postseason. Hey, uh, a lot of it has to do with Maxi. Um, a lot of that has to do with obviously Hassan Whiteside, Rudy Gobert, and then uh, Jalen's ability to get in the paint. Uh, at SethGoMatch.com, knowing that uh, the longer you take this series, the better the odds that Luke is going to make an appearance here on the line. So, in that regard, how big was you know, getting this one and, and not leaving yourself in a no two hole? Um, I mean, I think, well, I wasn't here last year, obviously, but I know you guys had a wild series uh, with the Clippers, right? Uh, nobody could win at home. Um, but in general, I mean, to your point, uh, we know that we, we buy time for, for Luka to come back. Um, it's not rocket science. Uh, we want to have him back as, as quickly and safely and healthily as possible. Um, but we're also focused on winning the series, uh, you know, regardless. So, um, like I said, after game one, like, there was, room for, there was a reason for optimism, and there's still a reason for optimism. We good? Oh, we got one on Zoom real quick. Oh. Kevin, go ahead. Kevin Gray, 105 through the fans. Spencer, talk about the mentality of having to stay with it tonight. Obviously, a rough go as the night went on, but sticking with it and doing other things to help the team win, regardless of getting calls or not, as the game went on tonight. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's life, man. You know, when you're not a star, you get 16 free throws. You know, obviously, it's going to be a point of emphasis when – it comes back around. So I should have known that and been a little bit more prepared uh, for that in, in game two. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious kind of what went on. Uh, but it is what it is. Like, as a player, you're happy to win. You know what I mean? Like, if we had a loss, I'd probably have a, a much different demeanor in here. I mean, even like the, the half court shot, like, he can't just run by and hit my left arm. Like, I don't care if it's a half court shot or not. Like, you, you just can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, and, and so those types of things do change the complexity of a game. Um, and then ch also change, like, whether or not y'all think I have a rough night or not, right? Because, what is it, 6 for 18, you take off four of those, and I'm 6 for 14, the percentages are solid. And, you know, I got, what, 
nine more free throws because I got fouled on the three. So, what, four shots? Yeah, six, three is six and nine. Yeah, let's say I hit seven of those free throws because I was actually hitting free throws tonight. Then you're at 24. I'm just saying, like, you, you, you could paint the line, right? Like, you'd have, you'd be six for 14, one for five from three, four, it, you know, however many free throws it was, 24 points, six assists, like, and you'd be sitting here saying, damn, you, know, you played well, and blah, blah. So, you know, it, it's life, but I'll take the win regardless. You gotta make sure you carry the one. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, you know, it's just, just quick, you know, off the cuff math. So, it, it, it's one of those things where, like, look, I know that the, the, the stat people and the people that watch box scores are going to be on my behind for this. And, and like I said, I should have been more prepared for that. But all in all, like, you know, the right decisions made, like my line looks different, like everybody's going to be happy and whatnot. So I'm not particularly mad um, about the way I played, other than the fact that I should have been prepared for it. So like that's where personal growth needs to happen. Like I should have known that was going to happen and not and, and adjust to that quicker. Spencer, for you guys to win this series, do you, are you going to have to win like you did playing tonight and be that reliant on three-point shots? Is that just the way it's going to have to be? Um, well, I think in general, right, like it's, it's the way that uh, Utah plays. So like, and then obviously not having Luka. So Luka's a big driving force for our offense. Obviously makes a lot of plays, takes a lot of shots, all that stuff, right? So when, when our emphasis is now to crack the paint, start the blender, hit the open man, um, like you said, it was it was 17 open threes, right? Like that was the most you said since 2010. Is that what you said? Uh, 17. Yeah, I think I think the stats like about. Years. Yeah, yeah. So so 10 years. So I mean, that's remember like you're you're looking for quality of shot, not necessarily like live and die by the three. We're not Golden State, but anytime you can get 17 or you know maybe even 20 open threes, right? You're, you're going to take that because quality of shot, like in and the way the basketball is played in 2022. You know what I mean? Like this ain't, you know, Kobe and Shaq Lakers with the triangle. Thanks. We good? All right. Thanks, Spencer. No